All right. Now that we got that out of the way, maybe I won't have to blow my nose again. We'll see. Let's see how that works. <laughs> the sermon this morning that God laid on my heart, and this is, uh, you know, it, it never amazes, I mean, it always amazes me that Reggie and I are on the same path. We don't talk to each other about, I, I generally ask him back there in the, on a Sunday morning, what's he preaching about? And uh, he'll tell me, but it's amazing what God, just kind of how li he lines up uh, what we are what we were preaching on, and I'm kind of picking up uh, uh, something that laid, God laid on my heart, and it's just kind of a, a continuation from last week, if you don't mind. Uh, the title of this sermon here, and I want you to listen to this title very good, is Do We Really Think That God's Got Us in the Palm of His Hand? So I got to ask you, and I, I don't want anybody raising their hands or anything like that. Just I'm going to ask you a question this morning is, when you get up in the morning, do you take, a lot of you are going to be first risers. It's going to either going to be the wife, the husband, the kids generally can be a first riser sometimes because they're out there crying and you've got to go tend to the kids. Am I right? <laughs> You just ignore them. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> <Out of you. laughs> um, my question to you this morning is, do you take time? Do you get up early enough to take time for yourself? Just you. If you don't take time for yourself, do me a favor. The best thing that ever changed in my life is when Beverly and I would get up 30 minutes before we went to work and we had our Bible reading together and we prayed together. And that started many years ago. And now, and, and Beverly will tell you, I'm slow out of the hole. I just am. When you get up in the morning, don't you come in there rattling me and, you know, what are you going to do today? What is this? What that? Do not do that. I can't take it. I, I am a slow to rise person. So when I get up in the morning, I just take time. And Beverly says, okay, I'm going to Beverly, don't say this out loud, but she says, okay, I'm going to stay in the bed until that grumpy guy in there gets up and running this morning. <laughs> anyway, uh, do me a favor. Think about that. Take some time for yourself in the morning before you start off your day. And it may be that you just need to sit there with you and yourself and just drink coffee or drink tea or drink water, whatever you drink in the morning, take some time for yourself before you start waking up the rest of the troops in the house. That's what I suggest. And if you want to spend part of that time when you're waking up with God, that's even better. But even at that, spend time for yourself. Take it, take time. Do me a favor. Turn to Matthew 14. We're going to go to verse 22. This is one of those verses that uh, get preached on a lot, but uh, I, I, I like this verse. And I've got, I got a lot of my favorite verses that we're going to talk about today. I told Courtney this morning that this, this is going to be a Bible drill today, so you better be, have your fingers ready to go. I'll try not. And I brought me a, I brought me a big glass of water this morning because I thought I might be a little long-winded and need a drink or two along the way. So just hang on to your hat as we get on through this. But anyway, here we go. So this is where Jesus walks on the water, okay? And so we're going to go from there and pick it up. It says, Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Key words. He went up by the, to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, there was, he was alone, but the boat was already considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, and the fourth watch is generally around 3 to 6 o'clock in the morning, so it's pretty early in the morning, Jesus went out to them walking on the, on the lake, it's, and when, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. 
It's a ghost, they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, I like these words, take courage. It is I, and don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus says, come. Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. He didn't holler back to the boat and say, throw me a life jacket. He didn't throw, holler back at the boat, throw me a rope. He cried, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. He says, you, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those that were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. They had already seen all these miracles that Jesus has been doing around people just touching him and getting healed. He's made blind people see. He's, he's done all these different things. And I find some things that's really amazing about this because he sends the disciples on ahead of him. He says, y'all go ahead and go. I'll catch up with you later. How did they think he was going to get there? I mean, I mean, they probably didn't. That didn't cross their mind because he. they've already seen a lot of stuff. But let me tell you something. This is the first time they ever seen Jesus walk on water, period. they never seen that before, so they was scared. They said, okay, this is a ghost. This ain't good. And uh, the Lord says it's I. But what I, what I want to focus in on is Peter has enough faith, and I, I would hope that I have that enough faith to step out of the boat. And some of you need to step out of the boat that you're in this morning. I don't know what boat you're in, but anyway, some of you need to step out and walk on whatever you need to walk on this morning. But you need to, here's the thing. When Peter got out of the boat, he looked at Jesus. He said, if it's you, Jesus, he says, ask me to come to you. And he said, I, he said, just bring it on, brother. Come on, walk across water. And he did. But what happened to Peter? He took his eyes off the Lord. He took his eyes off. And when he took his eyes off, he began to sink. So, he, the first words out of his mouth, Lord, save me. I'm going to key in on that, and you're going to hear, Lord, save me more than once during this sermon. So, a lot of us need to key in on, Lord, save me. Let's go to John 20, 29. I like this verse a lot, and, and, and Jesus talking to his disciples here in uh, John 20, verse 29. I don't know whether Peter, if Jesus wasn't standing there in front of him, would have stepped out of the boat without seeing Jesus right there. And I, if, if, I was, if Jesus was with me, I probably could say I can walk on water too. I'd probably say, call me and I'll come to you. I don't, I, and I would hope that I would have enough sense not to take my eyes off of him. The, the thing that, that really is remarkable about that is when he got into the boat, everything settled down. The waves calmed. And they was able to row again. The, the guys in the boat said, you really are God because even the wind lays down before you. Man, even the wind. Anyway, but we're getting down to in uh, John 20, verse 29, and Jesus is talking to his disciples. He says, because you have seen me. Now, this is, this is, he's talking to his disciples. Because you have seen me, you have believed. Listen to the next part because he's talking about you. He says, blessed are those who have not seen me and yet believed. Amen. Amen. Another one that just, it's, it's a faith thing. I mean, I mean, you really got to have faith uh, in Jesus Christ. And, and there's so many places in the Bible where you read and just people just touch their garment, touch the garment of Jesus, and, and they're healed immediately. The one that I like the best, the one that I like the best, I'm not going to go there and read it to you because I'm going to bust or paraphrase it, Mark 5, 25, and it talks about a woman that had been bleeding for some 15 years, and she had been bleeding and never got healed. In her mind, 
in her mind, she has heard that Jesus heals people. And when he was walking down the street with the disciples, and I can tell you the disciples surrounded Jesus pretty good because they kind of was there, his bodyguard, if you will, let's just call him bodyguard, trying to divert people from getting on him. But this lady had enough faith. She thought in her mind, if I can only touch the garment of Jesus, I will be healed. So she did. She slipped up behind Jesus and the disciples, everybody's looking forward. She slipped up behind him and touched his garment and immediately her bleeding problem was solved. But here's what I really like about that. Jesus says, someone touched me because I felt power that left me. And the disciples said, how in the world can you figure out that somebody touched you in this crowd? He says, no, somebody touched me. And it was the woman. She says, I was the one that touched you. This is all Buster paraphrase. Go read it. It's a great story. She, touched, she told him, she says, I was the one that touched your garment. And he said to her, your faith has made you well. Okay, what a way, what a way. Let's go to Isaiah 41. Courtney, you let me know when you get there, okay? I'll just check it. <laughs> By the way, those of you that are watching on uh, the internet and stuff, that welcome uh, to the Cowboy Church. And by the way, how's the family doing this morning? I'm just checking, make sure if everybody's doing okay. Everybody good? Amen. Let's give God an amen. We're good? Amen. amen. All right. I like that a lot. Reggie would have crucified me if he knew that I didn't say that when I got up here and preached, so I'm, I'm glad we got that done. Isaiah 41. Courtney, how are we doing over there, girl? <laughs> 41.10. 41.10. So do not fear. I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteousness in my right hand. In my right hand. And, and I find so many places in the Bible where Jesus talks about your right hand, that he reaches down and grabs your right hand. He's got you in his right hand. He was right-handed. Y'all get that? He was right-handed. That's good. So... Every morning, we, we're going to talk about every morning when you get up. I need to drink water. I'm sorry. Uh, I might even need to sit down. I don't know. We'll see. If Beverly, if you're watching this morning, I know I stole that glass this morning. And uh, I'm going to mark on your glass and you can whoop me later. All right, here we go. I got all this stuff going on here this morning. Put my little pan over here. Get over here. You got, you got that. Let's see. I got too many bottles of water. Okay. So, this is what God laid on my heart, so I'm going to just show it to you so we can kind of get this cleared. This is Beverly's glass. Actually, it's my glass, too, so it's, it's, I own 50% of this glass. All right, let's see if this magic marker is going to do it. Did y'all hear that? Good, I'm glad you got that. I Just making sure. How many of you had cold chills run down you? All right, I think I'm done with that, and we'll set that right there. Whew, it's been a hard morning this morning. There you go. That's good stuff. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the morning time, okay. Every morning when you get up in the morning, here's what you're going to wake up to. You're going to wake up half-filled. And your half-filled can go either way. It's your choice. This is something you need. You can take this choice upon yourself. If you get up in the morning and you don't have time for yourself and you start screaming... If you guys don't get out of bed, we're going to be late for church today. Maybe 
I hate Mondays. I can't wait till Friday gets here. I just hate Mondays. I don't like Mondays. I'm going to strangle you if you don't get out of that bed. I'm going to tell you right now, get your little motor scooter out of that bed or I'm going to strangle you. Any of you all ever said, don't raise your hand. I'm sorry, don't raise your hand. This would be one of Donna's words. We always talk about Tommy, but I'm going to give Donna a break this morning. It's, it's Donna's turn. Donna would say, if you don't get in this car right now, I'm going to hurt you. And that's Donna. We got her done there. <laughs> Driving on your way to work. You crazy sucker, you're number one in my life. <laughs> Sorry. I can't stand going to work because I hate my boss. I hate the workers that I work around. I hate this. And I just hate them. I'm just going to hate them all. So. If, I, if God's speaking to you right now, you just emptied out your glass. You're running on empty already, and you hadn't even started your day good. You're running on empty. This relationship between you and God is between you and God. It is not between me and you and God. It's between you and God. It's, it's your deal. This is your, this is your deal. Some of us, listen, listen to this. I, I've got to tell you, some of us are captive. You're captive. And I'm going to explain that. I'm going to try to explain that a little bit better. And you can be held captive. You can be held captive by your kids. Let's just suppose that your kids have graduated and they're on their own. They don't call you anymore. They don't. And let me tell you something. I, I got a daughter and I talked to my daughter about once every two months, maybe or I, I, maybe I try to call her once a month, but maybe I see her once every two months. Let's go there. It's not because I don't love her, and it's not because she doesn't love me. This world that we live in, it's baseball, it's soccer, and then there's all this stuff that we got. Mom's got to be a taxi, and let me tell you something, moms. My heart goes out to you. If you're a human taxi, God bless your heart. But you can be held captive because here's what can happen on something like that. You can get your feelings hurt by one of your kids that doesn't want anything to do with you. You've already raised them. You've already done your part. Maybe it's time you let go of that feeling in your life. Pray this prayer. God, my kids are no longer my kids. They belong to you. Because I've done the best I could about raising them. And I'm sorry that they are like they are. But God, I'm going to turn them over to you because I cannot, listen to this, I cannot serve you holding a grudge against my kids. I cannot serve you to the fullest that you want. I can't do what you want me to do in my life until I let go of that. Maybe it's a family member. Somebody that's hurt you in your family. I've got, I got one of those people in my family. I've got a sister that I love very, very dearly, but she wants nothing to do with me. And that's okay. I still love her. I still love her. I don't hold nothing against her at all whatsoever. It took me a while to get to that point to where I just love her unconditionally, even though she doesn't want to, she doesn't even want to see me. Matter of fact, if she sees me, she don't even want me to touch her. I mean, that's how much there, that, that's it. And you may have that going on in your family too. I've seen a lot of families and a lot of families have got that where one member of the family just, here's the deal, guys, forgive them. Forgive them and love them. The Bible says you can forgive them and love them, but hate what they did. And that's all you got, or dislike with, I, I, let's don't use hate. I hate that word. <laughs> that's an oxymoron, I think, or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> It could be something that you've done that you can't forgive yourself for. I preached a funeral this week in Fort Worth for a fine man. I've, I've known him many years, 30 years probably. Um, 94 years old. 
praying man. He prayed like you would not believe. He believed in God. But here's the thing. When he was in the military, a young man, he did some things in the military that he could not get over. And he asked for forgiveness from God. And God forgave him. God forgave him for whatever he did. But here's the thing. Satan, I ain't going to let him forget it. He will not let you forget it. So if you go, I, I'm just going to, this is another one of those verses. I'm just going to tell you about it. No, let's go there. Let's don't bust, pray, bust or paraphrase. First John, Courtney. I love you, Courtney. First John 1, 9. It's going to be kind of back at the back. And it's right at Peter, I think. First John 1, 9. Oh, come on. You quicker than I am. You go, girl. You're getting better at this, by the way. Just saying. Ah, I see. First John 1, 9. Listen to this. I don't know what you have done in your life, but let me tell you something. All you got to do is ask for forgiveness. And it is done. And it says right here, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and purify us from unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar. And his word has no place in our lives. If you are faithful to just take your issues to God and ask for forgiveness, he will forgive your sins. And, and what I like about, uh, I don't know if I wrote, yeah. In Psalms 103, 12, I'm not going there, Buster paraphrase. He forgives your sins as far as the east is from the west. The height and the depth, he forgives that sin. Now, just again, remember, Satan will not let you forget it. I seen Beverly and I was on a trip. We went to West Virginia to get an airplane. You know, we do dumb stuff like that. Um, we went into a Cracker Barrel. There's, I didn't realize there's a Cracker Barrel in every town. But that's a pretty good place to eat. So anyway, I, while I was waiting on Beverly, I was looking, just kind of got to looking around, and I seen a cup. I loved what it had to say on it. It says, on the dark days, help me to be like a sunflower, standing tall, looking for the light. You're going to have dark days in your life. And when you have that dark day, you think about a sunflower. Stand tall. Start looking for Jesus. Look for that light. All right? Let's go to Romans, Courtney. Let's see if we can get there. Y'all on race? All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to go. Oh, she left. She left the building. Courtney has left the building. Romans chapter 12. One more time. One and two. One and two. We're going to start off with... Uh, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Listen to this. Holy and pleasing to God. Courtney, we're in uh, Romans. Just checking, you, you know, letting you know. Romans. Yeah, Romans. We're in chapter 12, verse 1. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you did not say that in church. <laughs> Chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to be tested and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will for your life. God has got a perfect will for your life. I'm going to go, let's go right on across to starting in verse 9. It's talking about love, and it says, Love must be sincere. You need to hate what's evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted one to another in brotherly love. Honor one another 
as yourselves, above yourselves. Never be, I love this, never be lacking in zeal. Somebody's wife here that has got, to, oh, oh, I see you. I'm sorry. What's that sound you make? There you go. That's what I like. Keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patience in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Share with God's people. Wow. Wow. Philippians 4, 16 says, give thanks in everything. Whatever goes on in your life, give thanks to it. Okay. Now we're going to rewind the tape. Okay. So we're going to, I'm not going to start all over. I'm sorry. Oh, I got to get my water first though. Here we go. I got a big bottle of water this time. Woo, baby. All right. Uh, <laughs> Courtney, hang on, baby. You got this. Okay, we just rewound the tape. And you just got out of bed, whoever you are, whichever, one, whichever one's the first to rise. You just got out of bed, and you take 30 minutes for yourself. You take 30 minutes for yourself or you and God, however you want to look at it. This is Buster. When Buster gets up in the morning, he's grappy. I don't guess I'm grippy. I just don't want to be talked to, okay? That's probably the best thing I can tell you. So when I get up in the morning, generally, I'm generally about a 6 o'clock, 6.30 type person. It's biological. That's, I don't know how to explain it, but I generally get up and smile. I just smile. I just thank you, God, for another day. I, I really do. I, and this is honest. I thank God that I'm up and running again. You want to know what the second thing is that I'm thankful for? Coffee. Let's go there. <laughs> coffee. God, thank you for coffee. I need coffee to get my heart started. Generally, while I'm making my coffee, I can look out the kitchen window, and generally, I see the sun coming up. Beautiful sunrises. And let me tell you something. You need to stop and just thank God for that picture. God, thank you for that sunlight. I really do appreciate that sunlight. It's a beautiful day. And then I'll go sit down in my chair. And while I'm drinking my coffee, it takes about, I drink nearly a whole pot every morning. So, But it takes generally two or three cups before the heart starts working. That's all I can tell you. Because it takes a lot. Really? Me and you both? Okay, me and, me and Miss Jean's got a thing going on here. Uh, it takes two or three cups to get my heart working good enough to where my brain gets enough blood so my brain will go into gear. Now... It's okay for my wife to get out of bed. <laughs> yeah, some of y'all are laughing, y'all. Y'all, yeah, uh-huh. Don't you laugh at me. <laughs> All right. Your devotional yesterday morning, I'm sorry, your name, Rick? Tom, thank you. Rick, Tom, who knows, you know. Tom, you've done a great job yesterday morning at the men's prayer breakfast. Uh, and Tom, give me that thing that you look at every morning. Tell me what you say on your mirror. Today, I will do whatever he says to do. Wow. Let me give that some water. Water that flyer. One of mine, and when Beverly and I, when, when I begin to talk to her, we, when we pray, we pray to that God helps us to be a light that shines in darkness wherever we are, who we're with, whatever. And if she's just at home, God, help me to be a light this morning and shine wherever you want me to shine. Lord, this is, now I'm retired now. And, and, and let me tell you something. Yeah, yeah, I know you're laughing. <laughs> let me tell you something. I had a boss I hated. 
I mean desperately hated. So if you think I'm exempt from anything that I'm telling you, I am not exempt. Reggie is not exempt. I have those people who know how to jerk my chain. They just do. I work with a guy. Honestly, I, you got to love everybody, right? So I work with a guy, number one, one of the biggest pet peeves in Buster's life is a thief. That is the biggest thing that just, there is no sense for that. It almost makes me want to shoot them if I could find them. The second thing that is that really just, and my kids will tell you this, Amy, you can attest to this. Don't you lie to me. You're going to be a lot better off if you tell the truth. Don't lie to me. And a third thing that really bugs me, and that's the reason I like working with Tommy and Ron, I can't stand a lazy person. A lazy person just wears me out. And I have a guy that works for me that lies and is a lazy person. So there you go. God, give me patience to be with this guy today. And that's what you have to pray. You got to love that person. God, give me patience. Give me what I help me keep my mouth shut today and help me to be like a sunflower and look for your light today. And when you get to work, there's going to be a person that you just really despise or your boss that you despise. Start your day off like this. God, I'm going to leave this morning and God give me patience on the road. When I get to work, help me to be a light to that person that I cannot stand. Help me be a, help me be a light today. Help me show your light through me to this, to this person. Just keep doing that. And your cup will overflow. And you will be drinking from a saucer for that day. I tried to get Lindo to come and sing that song. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. Every one of you here today can go to work tomorrow or go do whatever you do and you can have that same thing. If you will, there's some things you need to do. There's some forgiveness maybe you need to forgive. Maybe you need to forgive yourself. Maybe there's some habits that you got you need to get rid of. There's some things that standing in the way of God doing exactly what he wants to do in your life so you can be that light that shines in darkness wherever you are. Amen. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, I thank you for this day and just the blessings of just being here. And I thank you for the band that's here this morning. I thank you for their, just their, you talking about a family. Father God, they are a family of their own. And I thank you for Nick and leading that band and how they uh, just feed off each other to bring us to a uh, just a place to where we can worship you in a good way. And Father God, I pray for each person here today that may be struggling with any of these things that you laid on my heart this, this morning. I pray that somehow you will make a change in their life this morning. And may they commit to you a different life starting tomorrow morning, whatever that is. And if you don't have Jesus living in your heart, I'm just going to ask you, and if you would like to have Jesus living in your heart, because you can, he will not hold you in the palm of his hand unless he has you. First thing you got to do is sign up for the drawing. So just pray this prayer with me. Father God, I know that I'm a sinner and I am lost. And I know that you died on the cross for my sins, Father God, and I appreciate that so much. And Father God, I'm going to ask you just to come into my life and live and make a change. Help me change to be who you want me to be today. And Father God, I thank you for that. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family. We love you and glad you're here. With that being said, thank you for being here today. God bless you. Amen.